Hi everybody, I'm going to talk to you about my favorite subject in animal behavior, which is sexual dimorphism. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, subjects to research just because each species has a different way of using their characteristics to find a mate, to reproduce, basically to keep the population growing. And each species is so different that it's so fun to learn about each one individually. And so I'm going to go through the reasons why sexual dimorphism is so important and the different types that they can be and what it is. So secondary sexual characteristics are the difference in appearance between a male and a female of the same species. So this could be different colors, this could be different shapes, um, this could be different structures on their bodies, anything that will help attract a mate. Um, so basically we're going to focus on what's called secondary sexual characteristics, which occur after puberty. The ones that are before puberty are the genitals. So those are something that you are born with and something that helps for the act of sexual reproduction rather than just attracting a mate. These secondary sexual characteristics do not aid in the actual act of sexual reproduction. It's just to find a mate. So secondary sexual characteristics are genuinely used to attract a mate of the same species. So females always will um, aim to have the offspring with the greatest chance of survival because that is what carries on their uh, characteristics and their genes. So they want to look for the impressive traits. Um, that's why so many males of species have these really elaborate um, structures to them. Uh, these characteristics can be used to fight for another, uh, fight with another male in order to determine who gets a mate, or it could determine fighting for a territory uh, for the family that they're trying to have, or it could just be to attract the female. So these are some more examples of the characteristics and just reasons why they might have these characteristics with them. So with Impala, they have uh, horns where the female does not have any horns. And this could be for the fighting. Um, they do a lot of sparring, male to male sparring. And so that could be because they are trying to fight for a mate or fight for the territory. Um, with the bird of paradise, every almost every bird of paradise species, you're going to see a huge difference in color with the males. And they are one of the best examples of the re of color for attracting a female. And they use this color to perform dances, to just get the attention of the female. And usually the female will see these colors and determine if they want to have those have offspring with this uh, bird because they also want their offspring to reproduce after that. So then with the uh, narwhal, they have, the males have these very long tusks and the female typically will never grow a tusk. And so there are different reasons why they think that narwhals have tusks. Um, and that could be because uh, it could break ice, um, it could harm enemies, but they mostly think, scientists mostly think that these tusks are basically just secondary sexual characteristic traits, that the longer the tusk is or the stronger the tusk looks, that the more they have, the higher percentage that they have to uh, reproduce. And so that's just one of the things that even though they can't really figure out exactly why a female is attracted to that, they do know that that is a secondary sexual characteristic so that the female does want to reproduce with the narwhals that have those tusks. And the final one that I have is a uh, mandrel. So the mandrel has a, the male has a very brightly colored face and butt. And so these mandrels, you can see the difference between the male and the female, and that's going to be, again, with the color, and it's going to attract the females. And when you're dealing with color, even though it's not something that could hurt another male or protect a family or anything like that, 
it's still very important because the female sees this as a way to pass those colorful genes down to their offspring. And like I said, they want their offspring to then reproduce. So they see this and think in the future that, well, my offspring will have this trait and then that will allow them to reproduce in the future. So when you're thinking about secondary sexual characteristic traits, they're definitely more prominent in males rather than females and more common. And there's a good reason behind this. If you think about the animal kingdom and the way that they reproduce, their goal is to have offspring that survive. That is their goal. And so if you think about a female, she's going to go for quality rather than quantity, where a male is able to go for quantity. So when you think about, for example, you think about an elephant who is pregnant for 22 months before uh, giving birth. So during that 22 months, a male is able to go out and reproduce with other females. And the more offspring that that male has, the greater chance that he has um, many that survive. Whereas a female basically needs to pick the right male in order to have offspring that will survive because there's only so much time that she has in order to reproduce. Um, females can only reproduce a certain amount of time in their lifetime. So they want that quality offspring that will then continue down the line and pass on their genetics. So males really want to use those traits to attract the most females to them. Whereas females now have these dull colors, they um, are able to kind of blend in with their surroundings a little bit more than the bright colors of birds and uh, sorry, male birds, because then they use that for their survival instincts. So the reason why I love this subject so much is because it can tell you so much about the interaction between a population of the same species. So it can tell you exactly which males are more likely to reproduce and you can kind of predict the generations from there on because you can see which secondary sexual characteristic traits females are going to be more attracted to. And based off of that, you can then predict what the offspring are going to look like, what genes are going to be dominant or recessive um, because those are going to be passed on through the generations. So not only are the mating dances of Birds of Paradise hysterical to watch, and it's not only, you know, seeing the different colors of baboon butts, and so you try to figure out what why that is. So it's not just the funny um, characteristics that make this subject enjoyable. It's just the fact that you're able to study so much about a species just based off of these traits alone. And that's why I love so much about this uh, subject.